Good afternoon and welcome to the EPI's news update on the local scene. Minister of Tourism and Culture, the Honorable Carlos James, announced in a media press briefing earlier today the plans to expand and modernize the Kingston port as it relates to accommodating incoming cruise ships. And I want to announce here that we need a modern port so that we can shift the existing commercial port, cargo port, that is uptown here, to shift it further to West Kingston, downtown, so that we can accommodate a larger area to expand our cruise terminal to accommodate larger ships and more ships that can come here at um, the same day calls. And that is one of the things that we're, we're really anticipating on the completion of the modern port, the cargo port, the commercial port, so that we are able to accommodate larger vessels at uh, the cruise terminal here in Kingstown. So while we are excited that the numbers are, uh, there's an uptick, they are still nominal in comparison to other destinations which are able to accommodate larger vessels. The Honorable Carlos James then spoke about taxi drivers and a new policy just approved recently by Cabinet. To give taxi drivers, regardless of the size of the vehicle, they will be allowed to import duty-free concessions on taxi-driven vehicles. And I want to announce here that as of today, we are facilitating concessions across the board for all taxi operators, whether it's a a, a coaster bus, a 30-seater, a 26-seater, an 18-seater, a 7-seater, or a 5-seater. It doesn't matter the, the, the size of the vessel, uh, sorry, the size of the, the taxi, but we are looking at facilitating concessions across the board. And these concessions on the receiving end will read as follows. A brand new vehicle to a year old will receive 100% concession, duty-free concession, exempt on import duty at the port for taxi operators. Vehicles two to three years of age, 75% exemption on import duty at the ports. Vehicles ranging from four years to six years, 50% concession at the port on import duty for an excise duty for vehicles um, at the port. And this also includes um, charges that also carry VAT as well. All of these tax uh, measures are going to be removed for taxi operators. Meanwhile, the capacity of the North Leeward Technical Institute has received a much-needed boost, thanks to a donation of eight computers. The computers were handed over by Member of Parliament for North Leeward, Carlos James, today. Leeward's side of the island is expected to soon see a boost in tourism and James said the Technical Centre will help to prepare the youth to seize the opportunities in hospitality. We're here to donate um, a total of eight computers. We have seven now. Um, the other one will be delivered by earliest tomorrow. Um, we have eight computers to start with. I know the Ministry of Education, they're working on getting um, some additional equipment for the facility um, in relation to um, construction and construction. Home, economics. home economics and so on. But by and large, um, we have to make this facility work and we have to make it work for the, the people of North Leeward, in particular the young people in the community who really need this opportunity for training. When we designed this facility, um, one of the main things behind it was to use it as a feeding ground for a lot of the hotels that are coming the opportunities for training in, in food preparation, in hospitality, some of the big ticket items. We wanted to be able to have a facility in North Leeward where we can have a number of training programs and then following the training programs, and remember what I said, I wanted it to be CVQ. CVQ. And in fact, the, the plan was to have a start and a, a partial rollout at an NVQ level, and I said, absolutely not. In North Leeward, we're going to deliver CVQ programs. And we were able to, to secure the, the resources to get that done. And James, who is also the tourism minister, said various hotels have expressed a willingness to partner with the Institute as it helps to train young persons. And I've been in touch with some of the hoteliers, um, Soho House, Sandals, 
And you know, they, they, I've, I've told them the story of how we created the North Leo Technical Institute. And naturally, they want to see a, a greater level of, of partnership in terms of the training, and we can marry some of the facilities, the hotels, with the, with, with the institute, so that persons can matriculate from here in terms of their civic training into the world of work. And that was one of the, the important initiatives in getting this facility up to provide the training and to have it as a feeder to support the hotel and, uh, the, the hotel and, and tourism and hospitality industry. So again, you know, we, we are hoping within a few weeks to have the official opening. Um, but we have to be here today to visit the school, ensure that the, the orientation and the sun went well, and to work with the, the teaching staff to see what, assess what are some of their needs, immediate needs, and how we can deal with that. And you know, when, when we have everything going and, and, and the oil um, at, 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 turning, turning the wheel, uh, make sure that everything is going smoothly, we, we will then proceed to have the official opening of, of this institute. James took the opportunity to thank all those who helped to get the center up and running. I intend to ensure that I work closely with the Ministry of Education and I work closely with the principal and the staff of this institute to deliver um, what is required in terms of the, the, the resources and importantly to also deliver the programs that is needed for the community and it's important that we look at that and then I want to really um, commend all of the teachers and the assistant teachers who are tutors who are here who have given of their time and resources and efforts to really ensure we, we started this, this program and of course the, the technical team within the Ministry of Education the PS will, will, will tell you, even on Saturdays, I, I call to, to ensure and inquire how are we going. Just to, I said, I hope you're not an Adventist. So I, I would call him on a Saturday morning to make sure that we have things ready for Monday and, and, and to, to facilitate the rollout. Ms. Hannaway, who has been very instrumental as well, I'm a former TVET um, principal at the Barrowley Technical Institute, who is now Senior Education Officer TVET, has really you know, worked with me to push to have this facility um, ready. Um, for this school term. So. Yesterday, the Minister of Tourism and Member of Parliament for North Leeward also took the opportunity to visit the Chateaubelair Learning Resource Centre to examine works being done. Minister James said the centre is undergoing some retrofitting work to enable it to do more for the community. The Minister highlighted some of the work being done. At the site of the Chateaubelair Learning Resource Centre, the team behind me is the local hard-working um, staff at Braxa and we are doing a site visit and an assessment of the, um, the LRC. Uh, what will happen in the next few months is that they're going to retrofit this facility uh, to accommodate the FITU's government school. By early next year, the first quarter of next year, we intend to do some expansion of the FITU's government school, um, the introduction of an early childhood center, the expansion of uh, the, the principal's office and the, the classrooms and making it a bit more comfortable um, learning environment for the students and the staff at the Fit Use Government School. So this is just... A Minister James said the centre will house students from the Fit Use Government School, which will allow the school to be repaired. Preliminary assessment as to whether or not we can have the school fit into this facility. Um, of course, it's, it's home to the Chateaubelay Magistrates Court, the Office of the Local okay. yes. Adult Continuing Education uh, Program, and of course, uh, there's an IT lab here as well. So we are looking to see how we can um, lo relocate some of the, the, the programs that are uh, delivered here to facilitate the, uh, the Fit Use Government School. Of course, during the hurricane season, uh, it's all, it also functions as one of the shelters. So the works would actually start in the first quarter of next year outside of the hurricane season, which will allow for students to move over from the um, site of the, the Fit Use Government School here to uh, the Learning Resource Center. And roughly about maybe six months or so, we, we do some expansion of the Fit Use Government School and uh, we, we try to improve the, the, the facility there to make learning more comfortable for um, students attending that, that, that institution. Meanwhile, the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, hosted a workshop on data preparedness today, Friday, October the 6th, 2023, at their headquarters at Old Montrose. 
The workshop seeks to streamline the process of acquiring important information during natural disasters and other disruptive events that may require proper logistical management of resources and other civic matters. The Data Preparedness Program was coordinated through the World Food Program, WFP, and facilitated by Fidel Massour, head of the SPG Satellite Office of the WFP. Among the participants of this program were officials from various government ministries, including ITSD, Health, Agriculture, and Education. The program also aimed to provide paperless data entry solutions as well as improving the utility of statistical information for enhancing decision making. Don't go away, our regional news is up next. Some of our most precious treasures. The crown jewels. The epitome of elegance. Saturday, October 7th, 8 p.m., Victoria Park. Miss SVG 2023, Crown Jewels. Nine magnificent ladies vie for the coveted Miss SVG Crown. Letitia Barber, Miss Grenadine House. Denicia Botswain, Miss Metrison General Insurance Limited. Diana Fairburn, Miss Play 4. Arena Foy, Miss Master Stores Limited. Trina Hooper, Miss National Lotteries Authority. Lion Laborde, Miss Flo. Samisha Millington, Miss Caress Ace Hardware. Tara Richardson, Miss JCI St. Vincent. And Royisha Telemac, Miss In Transit Exports. Early bird tickets $60. Pre sold $75. Ticket outlets The Lotta Booth at Peace Mo. Four Shells, Chill Spot, Johnny's Barbershop, VJ's Restaurant, Video Extreme Entice, and Terrence Auto Care. Miss SVG 2023 Crown Jewels. Saturday, October 7th, 8 p.m., Victoria Park. Welcome back. In our regional news, as stewards of fragile ecosystems, the Caribbean must prioritize the need for green investments and environmentally conscious practices with a sense of urgency. That's according to Caribbean News Now, this statement was made by the newly appointed Secretary General of the Caribbean Tourism Organization, Donna Regis Prosper, during a recent regional forum commemorating World Tourism Day 2023, held on Friday. Regis Prosper explored the three fundamental pillars supporting this year's World Tourism Day theme, emphasizing the Caribbean's dedication to sustainability as aimed to take the lead in sustainable tourism. In the Caribbean, there are small islands that have already started their green initiatives, like eight Eastern Caribbean states, Grenada, Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, St. Lucia and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. They are developing their own strategies for geothermal energy plants. Dominico, meanwhile, has been championing the construction of climate-resilient infrastructure, such as houses and other public facilities, with the help of private development company MMC Development Limited. Regis Prosper also highlighted the importance of prioritizing people-centered tourism, emphasizing the necessity of addressing the knowledge and skills gap in the Caribbean. In our international scene, the administration of U.S. President Joe Biden will be resuming deporting Venezuelan mi migrants and add sections of the southern border wall carrying forward a signature policy of former President Donald Trump. According to Al Jazeera, Washington's announcement came on Thursday, two weeks after Biden extended temporary legal status to more than 470,000 Venezuelans living in the United States, saying that the conditions in their home country prevent their safe return. The Venezuelan migrants were the largest single group encountered at the U.S.-Mexico border last month. The U.S. government is under political pressure to stem the flow of people. For more than a year, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has been busing migrants from the U.S. border to places like New York, Washington, and Chicago, prompting angry complaints from Democrat officials in these cities. One of Biden's first actions after taking office in January 2021 was to issue a proclamation pledging no more American taxpayer dollars will be diverted to construct a border wall, as well as a review of all resources that has already been committed. The administration said Thursday's action did not deviate from Biden's proclamation because the money was allocated during Trump's term in 2019 and has to be spent now. 
Mayako said a construction project was appropriated during a previous administration and the law requires the government to use these funds with an announcement made earlier in the year. And that's all we have for today's news update. Thanks for viewing. News update is brought to you every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 5 p.m. on Channel 116 and live on Facebook. Until next time, I am Bavin Oliver. Good afternoon.